Welcome to the Bettendorf Public Library's Take Home Workshop. This time around, we're going to be doing image transfers. So an image transfer is just what it sounds like. We'll have an image that we printed off and we are going to transfer it to these blank wooden tiles. Um, you can do color, you can do black and white, you can do it on these wood tiles, you can do it on other surfaces too, but this is what we'll be working with today. It makes um, for some really lovely looking artwork that you could either hang um, as an alternate way to display photos that you love, or you can put um, bumpers on the back of this. They'd make a great looking set of coasters. So we're going to show you how to do that today. So let's take a look and see what's in the kit. Here are the supplies that you'll need for your image transfer. You're going to need your, your images. Now these are laser jet printed. So most home printers are inkjet print. That's not going to work. You can either use the ones you have in your kit or if you have photos of your own that you want to use, you can print them on laser jet printers at the library. So you could come in and you can use one of our workstations, uh, one of our computer workstations, or you could go to www.bettendorflibrary.com slash wireless hyphen printing, and you can send your print jobs from home to the printer at the library. So you have a couple options there for getting inkjet printers of your own photos if you'd like to use those. You're going to have a wooden blank. We're using a wooden one here today. This is just a four inch square uh, wooden black av blank available at any craft store. A popsicle stick, a foam brush, and then the gel medium that this is what we're using to transfer the images. So the gel medium, let's talk about that for a second. This is actually what we're using. This is uh, a, it's got a matte finish. It's a regular weight. You can get this um, transfer medium in a variety of weights and finishes, shiny or matte. Different companies make it, <clears throat> and depending on who you talk to, they have different ones that they like. It's intended to be an additive to acrylic paint to make it more transparent, but this is another use for it. So you have about a half an ounce, which will give you enough probably to do two if you want to do another, um, if you want to get another blank and do another one. What you will need to supply is some rags, a little bit of water, um, and then optionally a few drops of oil um, to finish for a finish that I will talk more about later. And that's all your equipment. So let's get started. To transfer the image, we're going to apply our gel medium to the tile and then put our picture face down so that the printed side is down. So that's something you need to keep in mind that if you're doing something with text, it needs to be printed in reverse so that when you lay it down, it'll show going the right way. So this one has a clock and it's going to be showing backwards. You'll see that. Um, one thing I should have mentioned that you did need also was scissors because we've gone ahead and I've cut out the image that I use. These images are instead of four by four, they're three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So that'll give you a little border around the edge of your four inch tile. So we're going to use our brush and we're going to scoop some up and we're just going to paint it on there. You want it to be thick enough so that it's visible, certainly. Um, and we're going to take it right out to the edges, even though our image doesn't go right out to the edges is I'm taking it out to the edges anyway, because it's just easier than trying to stop an eighth of an inch away. So we're just going to, so you want it to be like, um, not as thick as frosting. I mean, you're still going to be able to see your tile through the, um, through the transfer medium, but thick enough that you can leave, you know, you can leave a trail through it. You don't want to leave a trail through it, but you want it thick enough for that. So we want a nice smooth finish. And then we're going to lay our image down again, face down. Center it up. And this is where our craft stick comes in. 
So we're going to burnish it, but we don't want to burnish it very hard. The craft stick is just to apply it so that it's all laid down smoothly. So there are no air bubbles in there. You don't want to rush rub so hard that it pushes that transfer medium out the edge of the thing because you need that in there. You can also do it with your fingers, to be quite honest with you. But the, the craft stick is nice because it lets you apply even pressure across the whole tile. When that's done, I'm gonna pick that up and then I'm just gonna use one of my rags to wipe the edges. Cause this craft medium, the, or the transfer medium will dry and you'll have little globs hanging off the end and that's not so attractive. So, but I'm just gonna wipe them off. Now, here's the hard part. We're gonna sit and let that dry and we're gonna let it dry overnight. It's very tempting to do the next step sooner than it's fully dry, but if you do, it could ruin it. Um, you could try, you know, putting a fan on it. You could try putting it out in the sun. You could try using a hair dryer. But I would just recommend now setting this aside, trying to forget about it till tomorrow, and then we're going to come back and do the next step. And we're back. So our image has dried totally. This has been sitting overnight. Um, in fact, this one has been sitting for closer to 24 hours, over 24 hours actually, um, but it just needed to be overnight so it was dry. So now we're gonna get it wet again. We're gonna take a little bit of water on a rag and we're just going to wet this down. And you don't wanna totally soak it, soak it. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna rub. And what we're trying to do is we're going to rub away the paper and leave the image behind. So you can see how that's starting to go. And you can use a rag, you can use a sponge. I'll be honest with you, I just like using my fingers for a lot of it because it gives you a little bit better feel. If you rub too hard, it's going to rub right on through and take your image off. And that's obviously not what we're going for. So a little bit of water, a little bit of rubbing, and we're just going to keep doing this until just the image is left. So there you can see your image. Now you can see in this case, I rubbed a little too hard in one or two spots. And so some of the image came up. And in some places, there's still a little bit of paper there. So it's up to you really how much of that paper you want to take away. Depending on your image, you might wanna leave some of that because it gives it a little bit more of a weathered look. For something like this, which was originally black and white and which it had spots where it didn't adhere well because apparently I didn't put the medium transfer down thick enough. Um, having it, leaving a little paper behind so it gets more of a weathered look is desirable. Looking at another one that I did, this one um, came through pretty well. I don't have very too much spots where the um, image right away, but it looked, to me that looks like an old postcard. Um, and I kind of like the weathered look here. This one though has quite a bit left on it and this I have done and removed the paper and it's dried, but now I'm gonna go back one more time and give it one more rub with water to get the last little bit of that paper off one more time. And you can feel it as you go that there's not, I'm not getting these big things of paper like I did on that first one, just a little bit. I'll give it a little wipe off with a rag. 
Now, you'll have to keep doing that for a long, long time to get rid of all the paper, and you run the risk of damaging the image. So let me show you what we can do that will make that image pop a little bit more without having to run the risk of rubbing it off. So the last step in making make sure that this is a nice smooth finish, and we'll demonstrate on this one because it's nice and dry, you can see there's still some of the white fibers from the paper left there. There's very few, so if I rub on those, I'm afraid I'll take the image, but I don't if I don't want to see those, I'm just going to dip my finger in a little bit of oil, and I'm just using canola oil, and just a touch. I'm just dipping it around, and then I'm rubbing it in. And the paper's going to soak that oil up. And you can use whatever oil you have around the house, like a cooking oil, um, an olive oil, you know, something like that. But it, it takes away the look of some of that um, paper that's still there. I'm just going to get a little blot so that we don't have extra. And just makes it look a little cleaner, gets rid of some of that, uh, the look of the view of the white fibers there. So those are our image transfers. Now this image transfer, we're doing it on wood. It works on porcelain as well. Um, I've been playing around with that a little bit. I haven't been as successful yet, but I've had enough sex to know, success to know that um, it will work once I get better at it. But I love the look of these. Um, you could, I'm probably gonna use these as coasters, but I'm thinking you could put images of your pets on there, people you know. Um, Get a little mini easel and set that up or hang it on your wall and it's just a really interesting way to display some photographs that will be different from anything that we've done before so i hope you like i hope you're successful with the image transfer i hope you like them and we'd love to see what you do so take pictures and share them with us on facebook and instagram and twitter